It's a moment filled with suspense when the kill door is opened and we discover what has happened in the firing. Sometimes we are pleased, sometimes disappointed, but it's always an exciting time. All these pots were made without a potter's wheel. That is, they were made by hand-building methods. There are many, many ways by which we can form clay into pottery or sculpture. All of these drinking mugs, which are first attempts by students, were pinched out of balls of clay. Making a pinch pot involves us, just our hands and the clay, in a very close relationship. Two or more pinch pots may be combined in an imaginative way. Larger ones might be called punch pots. It's fun to discover what interesting patterns, designs, textures you can make in the clay. Modeling in clay involves pinching, pulling, and shaping. This composition of two figures was made by one of my students. After shaping, she allowed the clay to stiffen until it was leather hard, then carved and scraped it. This technique of modeling a solid form, allowing it to become firm, then hollowing out the thicker portions, was also used by Father Anthony Lauk of Notre Dame University for his sculpture of hands and for Lot's wife you remember, who was turned into a pillar of salt. Pottery can be made by this same system. Timing is very important when working with clay. We model and shape when the clay is moist and pliable. Then when stiffer, we can carve and hollow out. I would say as a general statement that any piece of clay which is over three quarters of an inch thick should be hollowed out. Very thick pieces have a nasty habit of exploding in the firing.
make the wall of a hollow object an unusual and decorative method, which goes quickly, is to lay up flattened balls of clay that are pressed firmly together. Work them together well on the inside. Slabs of clay can be used in many ways. A sheet of clay may be draped over a plaster hump mold. Don't beat the clay onto the mold, just press it gently but firmly in place. For feet, you might attach balls of clay and work them on well. I'm trying to get the feeling that they are integrated. They seem to grow out of the form. After the piece is firmed up and will hold its shape, it is removed from the mold the edge is trimmed and sponged. Several of these draped forms can be combined to make a larger piece like this serving dish. Two drape molded pieces can be put together to make a closed form or a volume. You have to catch the clay when it's just right to work on. It has to be stiff enough that it will hold its shape, but not too hard to join by knitting. Almost any shape can be used for a mold, but remember if the form is non-porous like this basketball, it must be covered with cloth or paper toweling. The clay will probably stick to a mold of glass or metal or anything else which is non-porous unless you use cloth or paper toweling between the mold and the clay. When adding a foot rim, it is helpful to knit the soft clay together, then use a little reinforcing coil for strength. Thank you.
If you want a uniform thickness to the slab of clay, wooden strips are used as guides. Clay should always be rolled out on a piece of cloth, otherwise it will stick to the tabletop. If the clay is just right, and you can get it into a cylinder form, it will stand, unsupported. When working with soft slabs, just a little water can be used to help bond the joints, or really nothing at all if the joints are worked together well. After I get the basic shape for this piece, I will add little clay ropes to the surface and make a busy line design. This is great fun. It goes fast, and I think that a raised or embossed decoration is more exciting than a carved in design. This neck is made with coils, a basic hand building technique which is explored in The Coil Method, another film in this series. Square plates are easy to make. Fun to decorate. And very practical as well as pleasant to use. This group of fish on the wall was made from slabs which were curved slightly. If you want to end up with a pot or a sculpture with perfectly straight sides, let the slabs stand until they are firm, then score the edges with a piece of comb, and apply thick slip in the joints. No knitting back and forth is done but the joints are pressed firmly together. All sorts of simple tools and found objects may be utilized to impress designs and textures into bits of clay which have been added to the surface.
Father Lauk's sculpture called Judgment Seat was made by this method. Potter Dick Hay used soft slabs and Howard Kotler used clay slabs which were a bit more firm. Artist John Delaplane assembled this construction from squares of stiffened clay. You can have a lot of fun with designs and textures. You really don't need much equipment. Basically, some clay and your hands.